So H.R. 1454 has been introduced and this bill seeks to treat firearms assembly kits along with parts as actual firearms and therefore subject to background checks and other requirements. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think that the federal government needs to stop trying to infringe on our Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to two of the main sponsors of the channel, the first being USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you look into companies like USCCA. That's who I recommend, and I'll put a link to them down in the detail section. I also want to thank Safe Life Defense. They offer some of the best and most affordable body armor and other products out on the market. They are currently having their five-year anniversary, so you can get some additional discounts right now if you purchase their products. And also, if you use the code ARMSCHOLAR, you will get an additional 10% off of your order. So if you're in the market for body armor, now is the time. Click the link down in the details section and use the code ARMSCHOLAR. So HR 1454 is known as the Ghost Guns Are Guns Act. This bill is sponsored by Representative Adriano Espalat, uh, out of New York, and it currently has 88 co-sponsors. So as this bill sits right now, it has 88 co-sponsors, most of those actually being Democrats, like we've seen with a lot of these bills that have been introduced into the House. They get heavy co-sponsors, and right now this one has 88 Democrats supporting it. And what this bill does and why I wanted to bring it to your attention is because it does something really interesting. It treats various kits and combination of parts as actual firearms. And it does this by going in and amending uh, Title 18 of the U.S. Code, um, specifically Section 921A. This is the definition of what a firearm is. So this bill goes in and redefines that section, bringing new things into the definition of what a firearm is. To pretty much broaden the definition of what a firearm is. Specifically, it's going to add in language that any destructive device or uh, it's going to be a new subsection E, any combination of parts designed or intended for use in converting any device into a firearm and from which a firearm may be readily assembled. Regulation of 80% lowers or so-called ghost guns has been heavily in the news right now. The Biden administration has been really focused on trying to regulate 80% lowers. Even before he was elected, he said that he wanted to be aggressive on ghost guns and 80% lowers. This is another bill which does that in a different aspect. What it does is it broadens the definition of what a firearm is. And how it does that is it expands the definition of a firearm to include various kits and parts kits to be actually considered to be a firearm. And why this is concerning is because we don't know how broadly they're going to use this language. Are they going to limit it to only buy, build, shoot kits? Or are they going to say any combination of parts that you go online and purchase could actually be considered to be a firearm and then subject to regulations that actual firearms are, like background checks, like serialization, waiting periods, things like that. This isn't a novel topic. For example, the state of California tried to do something like this very recently in actually requiring uh, firearms precursor part vendor licenses. Um, initially, there was a bill and the language of that bill was targeting various actual parts and was trying to treat them as firearms and subject them to being purchased only through licensed precursor part vendors. The state of California was trying to say, if you can use these parts to build a firearm, we want to regulate them like firearms. There was a lot of uproar on that initial language and eventually it was changed to only include actual 80% lowers. That bill was actually passed in that iteration only targeting 80% lowers and then was also expedited last year through SB 118 pushing that uh, firearms precursor part vendor licensing requirement up to uh, July 1st of 2022. So in the state of California coming in 2022, individuals can only purchase 80% lowers from licensed vendors. But in that prior iteration of that bill, they were trying to require that for all firearms parts, including triggers, barrels, and other accessories as well. So if you look at this language, which says that um, they're going to treat any combination of parts designed or intended for use in converting any device into a firearm as a firearm, um, it's not clear how broadly they're going to try to use that language. Any combination of parts, that could be something as simple as lower parts kits. Are they now going to treat lower parts kits as firearms? I think when they initially wrote this bill, it's specifically for those buy, build, shoot kits, but that doesn't mean they will try to actually use this language to regulate other things as well, like lower parts kits or upper parts kits or other things like that. So a bill like this, H.R. 1454, can result in people having to run background checks, perform waiting periods, maybe even serialization 
of parts like triggers and other things. Now, I think this bill is mainly targeted at those buy, build, shoot kits, but that doesn't mean they will try to use this language in a more expansive way to actually bring other things into the definition of what a firearm is. We've seen Biden come out even recently being very aggressive and calling for Congress to pass various forms of gun control like HR8 and HR 1446, which deal with background checks. But something like this, HR 1454, could be another way to achieve a goal which he's also been focusing on, which has been so-called ghost guns or 80% lowers. He said himself that he would like his administration to target through executive actions, so-called ghost guns, and he wants the ATF to bring 80% lowers within the definition of what a firearm is under the Gun Control Act like we see here. But that could be coupled with this bill as well because now you have this bill teed up in the House and could potentially be passed like we saw HR8 and HR 1446 get passed as well recently. So we need to be getting active out against this bill as well as all those other bills that we talk about on this channel. Make sure you're contacting your local representatives. Let them know you do not agree with this bill. You don't agree with treating parts and various kits as actual firearms because they simply are not firearms. They're just little pieces of plastic, spring, metal. They are not firearms within themselves. And for the government to try to regulate them as firearms is absolutely ridiculous. I also want to mention that next month, May 8th and May 9th, I will be holding an event along with Reno May called the Armed in May event in San Bernardino at the Route 66 Shooting Sports Park. So if you want to come out, meet me, Reno May, shoot, have some good food, meet a lot of vendors. We were having that event May 8th and May 9th. I'll put a link down in the details section for you to reserve a spot and get more information on the whole event. And I look forward to meeting a lot of you guys out there. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell because that helps the channel analytics. Helps to spread the word about the Second Amendment, also spread the word about two infringements like this that are going on in our nation. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.